Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Q&A edition of Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 1217. I'm Greg Audino, your host and narrator, and I'm also a certified life coach. I'm a writer and I'm an advice columnist. And today we'll be taking a look at a great question that's come in from one of your fellow listeners that's really covering all things relationships. Um, not to sound markety, but this question is uh, probably as on brand of a question as I could have asked for for ORD. Um, so what I hope that means is that you'll all find value in it. And above all, I hope we'll be able to help this listener out. So let's hear her question and optimize your life. I've been really struggling recently with my relationship with my sister. For years, she has been battling depression and anxiety. She recently came out as bisexual, and I'm elated that she felt comfortable enough to share that with me. I don't know how to handle when your loved one is in a toxic and manipulative relationship, though. My sister has been seeing this woman off and on again for the past two years, and I fear she feels as though I don't support her sexuality, when in reality, I don't support the toxic relationship itself. Through the ups and downs of this relationship, whenever myself or others, like friends, have voiced our concerns, we get shut down. I don't know how to support her in this difficult situation. I feel every time I try to just spend time with her, I push her further away, and she's becoming more isolated from her friends and family. Every time they're off, she will come to me with awful stories, and every time they're on, she defends her to no end. How do I support my sister when I can't support the toxic person she is with? All my appreciation, constantly conflicted. Constantly conflicted. There's a good alias. Thank you for sending this question in, Constantly Conflicted. Uh, this is really powerful, and as is often the case on Saturdays, I find myself very humbled to be trusted with such information. So, let's take a look. I think first, I find myself wondering whether or not there's proof that she thinks you don't support her sexuality or that you're somehow pushing her further away. Now, I suppose it would be difficult to find conclusive proof of such a thing unless she were to say it out loud, but... What I'm getting at is that maybe you'd find it helpful to instead question if that fear is coming from old fears, the trouble you've had connecting with her, the need to connect with her, and being terrified of losing that progress that you've worked so hard to earn. So are you really pushing her away, or are you just so scared of being back to square one that you imagine her being pushed away? That kind of fear would be really understandable and easy to fall into, but it still could make you very sensitive to challenging her in any way. And sometimes, oftentimes, we need to challenge loved ones for the relationships to be strong and get stronger. But regardless of the answer to that question uh, of whether or not it's true or a story that you're pushing her away, to me it's still ideal for you to be truthful with her, right? Now, God forbid this relationship with her was to regress. It would be healthier for you as an individual if that relationship regressed because you were honest than if the relationship was to seemingly prosper because you were being someone you're not or walking on eggshells. Because that would be a contrived relationship. And many times, the best way we can be truthful and honest with people is to check in with the here and now. So that's discussing how we're feeling about our relationship with the person we're interacting with and momentarily pulling the focus off of trying to help or support them in a separate part of their life. This means addressing your sister directly with like the question you've asked me instead of, at least for now, making her relationship with her partner the focal point for you. So to me, it feels like it's time for a conversation like that to happen. And not to worry, you can still do this in a way that is um, both strategic and supportive of her needs. It is possible to be self-serving and address something we really need to address for ourselves while also presenting in a way that is as respectful as possible for the other person. So what does this look like for you and your sister? Well, what do you think? Uh, maybe, it's, maybe it's addressing this in a time when she and her partner are off and your sister could be more open to hearing this. Maybe it's addressing it in a way that's really language conscious, speaking from your own perspective and using terminology like I feel rather than you are or she is. 
This subtle shift can make the listener feel much less targeted or accused of something, which is important, obviously. Um, maybe it's beginning the conversation with an acknowledgement of how far you feel you've come with your sister and that your goal is maintaining that closeness. And perhaps above all, maybe it's just asking your sister what you can do to best support her. Now, this one could be an interesting challenge for you because even if she doesn't know the best way for you to support her, or she says something to you that you disagree with in terms of how you can support her, as long as it's not a violation of your own boundaries or values, the thing is, sometimes it's best to just listen to that idea and participate in it if it's what she feels she needs. And then, be flexible and willing to change your means of supporting her if she starts to realize that she does need support in another way after all. Now, I understand wanting to be protective of your sister and the relationship you have with her. It feels really heroic, I guess is the word I would use. Um, but heroism comes in many forms and it's important to be open to them. There's the hero we think we need to be. There's the hero others need us to be. There's the hero others want us to be the hero to be right now, which can contrast the hero to be later on, uh, and everything in between. So don't be afraid to make this more about intentionality, being intentional about experimenting with different ways of helping her rather than feeling like you need to help her exactly the right way. She's more likely to notice your effort and flexibility rather than your ability to somehow know precisely what's right for her. So I was talking to my nephew recently, asking him about his day at school. He likes getting snarky with me. And when I say, how was school? He says, school. Very uninspired, clearly not engaged or interested in elaborating. Uh, and he's done this before. And every time he does this, I find myself wondering what he's really interested in. And that's when I discovered OutSchool. So OutSchool offers the largest variety of live, interactive online classes for kids pre-K through high school. The classes are actually fun. They cover every interest you can think of and some you can't, like video game design, cartoon animation, playing an instrument, speaking a language, creative writing, and so much more. They're all super affordable. Plus, you can choose the size and group that works best for your child, including one-on-one -on -one options, making it easy for them to learn no matter what. I know that OutSchool has helped my nephew get excited about learning, and they can definitely help your kids too. So to learn more about all OutSchool has to offer and to save $15 off your child's first class, go to outschool.com slash ORD and use code ORD. That's code ORD at O-U-T-S-C-H-O-O-L dot com slash ORD to save $15 off your child's first class. Outschool.com slash ORD. Okay, dear friends, that is going to wrap us up for this Saturday Q&A. Constantly conflicted. I hope this episode was helpful for you. And if not, you can email me back at advice at oldpodcast.com for follow-up questions or concerns. And as I hope all of you listeners know, that goes for each and every one of you too. Questions or comments about this episode are welcome. And certainly questions about separate matters that you'd like help with on the show are not just welcome, but they do help keep the lights on around here. So keep asking away. <laughs> Aside from that, though, have a great rest of your Saturday if you're listening in real time. And I'll talk to you again tomorrow where I will share a post from the Gottman Institute. Love them. That's where your optimal life awaits.